So I thought what I'd do rather than talk about our recent result because we reported last Monday is instead talk a bit about who we are and we had an investor day uh, about a month ago. And so I thought I'd cover for you what we covered at our investor day. Before I get to that though, uh, a few headlines on this page. The first one, top right, I always like to start with $5 billion returned to shareholders over the last eight years. So that's via dividends and also on market buybacks. To put that in context, that's about three quarters of our current market cap that we've returned to shareholders over the last eight years. If you go to the top left, this just talks about our asset position. As I said, we're Australia's largest rail freight operator. We manage and operate about 5,000 kilometres of track infrastructure. That's all in Queensland, South Australia and the Northern Territory. But we also operate around 700 locomotives. To put that in context, the second biggest rail freight operator in Australia has a bit more than 500 locomotives, and the third biggest rail freight operator has less than 100. So compared with the third biggest, we're about seven times the fleet of theirs. On this page also, you can see on the left, uh, we have two aspirations that we updated at our investor day. The first is to grow our bulk earnings to be 25 to 30% market share of a market that we estimate is about $1.7 billion. That equates to bulk EBITDA of 400 to $500 million. The second aspiration is to move half a million TEUs on rail by 2030. Uh, those are both new aspirations that we spoke about at our investor day. If we go to this page, this is a page that outlines how we're progressing against those strategic aims. And so on the left-hand side, you can see our coal and our network businesses. Uh, they're very stable, highly cash-generative businesses. And you can see over the last five years that EBITDA from those two businesses has been within 10%. So you can see ranging from the high 1.2 billions to around 1.4 billion. So very stable revenue streams from those two businesses. If you look to the second chart on the left, you can see our bulk EBITDA. So remember I said our aspiration is to get bulk EBITDA to 400 to 500 million by 2030. You can see there a meaningful step up from 22 to 23, and it generated 214 million of EBITDA in 2023. The next one across you can see is called TEUs. That's 20 foot equivalent units. That's containers that we move. Uh, with the acquisition of one rail that we did at the start of 23, that moved from zero to 97,000. Again, we have an aspiration to move that to half a million used by 2030. And on the next page, I'm going to talk about how we're going to achieve that. And on the right, you can see the percentage of revenue from thermal coal. This is a key measure that a number of our investors, debt and equity, look at. And you can see through the growth of our bulk and containerized freight businesses, that percentage has been coming down. Uh, it started at a bit over 40%, now down to around a quarter of our revenue from thermal coal. We expect that to be between 10 and 20% by 2030, and we think that'll open up new pools of capital for the company. I spoke about our aspiration to move more than half a million TEUs on rail on our network by 2030. One of the ways we're going to do that is via something called land bridging. And we spoke about this at our investor day, which we held up in Darwin. Now, as I said, we bought the one rail business, which is two and a half thousand kilometres of track running from a place called Tarkula in South Australia up to Darwin. It principally does the export of bulk commodities, but we're going to also use it for the import of containers. So traditionally, containers come into Australia via the major capital city ports, and ships come out of Asia and they tend to stop in Brisbane, then Sydney, then Melbourne. Some of them then go on to Adelaide and on to Perth. We're going to reposition that supply chain and we're going to focus on bringing containers into Darwin and then rail them to Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane. If you look at a map of Asia, you'll see that the shipping distance from China to Darwin is half that of going from China to Melbourne. And that, among other things, is going to drive a meaningful saving in time. So this is all about cost parity, but giving a time saving. So if you want to move a container at the moment from China to Melbourne, you have two options. One is to go via sea, which is shown on this map, and that takes about 17 days. The other option is to fly it overnight. It takes a day, costs you about $50,000 or more on air freight. What we're going to do is somewhere between that, about 10 days to go from China into Melbourne, 
And you can see on the chart there on the right, that's a meaningful saving of seven days. We think that's going to be appealing to the end users who tend to want to want their goods, if you think about Amazon, much quicker than they did in the past. The other benefit that this will give is that the shipping lines can get better utilisation of their ships because the ship can just come out of Asia into Darwin and then go back up to Asia. So that's what we think is going to drive that half a million TEUs by 2030. We have the rail line now that runs between uh, Tarkula and Darwin. So it's something that Horizon can offer our customers. We're pretty excited by this. The last thing I want to touch on is a bit more near-term focused, and that's our outlook for FY24, uh, which we provided the market a month ago. We're pretty proud that for the last five years, we've given quantitative guidance. Uh, we've done that again for FY 2024. You can see on the chart at the midpoint of our guidance range, we're expecting an uplift of EBITDA of about $200 million from FY 23 to 24. That's driven by volumes and therefore earnings in each of our haulage businesses being up, but it's also driven by our regulated revenue from our network business. So we have a big catch up for inflation of our asset base and also our weighted average cost of capital has gone up from the 1st of July 2023. They both give us benefits in terms of our regulated revenue, which is going to step up $125 million from 23 to 24. So that's what underpins our guidance, a meaningful step up, uh, really underpinning the fact that in a higher inflationary and an interest rate environment, Horizon tends to benefit or at least be insulated from those two factors. <music>